In this video, we will see how Fedina team has done initial setup for your institute. If you've chosen to host application on our server, you'll get the credentials of accounts.fedina.com once you make the purchase. Also, we'll be sending you a form which you must have filled for us to be able to enter data into your Fedina Institute. The form will have information like the name of your institute, the type and attendance type, and other details which are basic. Using these details, we are going to enter the data into your Fedina URL. But before that, I'll show you how we create your Fedina school. So this link that you might have got is your accounts panel link. This is where you will be able to create your school. Once you open this using the credentials that you have, you will see a screen like this. Also you will see here the name of your institute. So this is a demo school that I've created. And I've given it some name. For you, it will be the name of the institute that you have given. In this case, let's say in the form you have entered ABC Institute. So we will have here ABC Institute. In case you would like to change the name of this institute, you can. You can make it the one that you want to show. For example, let's say it's ABC School that you'd rather want to show. Also, in Fatina, you can create two kinds of modules. Also, in Fatina, you have two kinds of modules. You have core modules, which most of the institutes all over the world use. For example, admissions, examination, timetable, and so on. Other modules, which are alumni, which can be library, hostel, inventory, etc., are plugins. So here I'll be enabling data palette plugin which is related to the UI of Fedina. So if you want the UI to look professional, you can enable data palette from here. If you do that, when you log in into this school, you will be able to see dashlets and you'll get a dashboard. So here I am enabling one of them right now. Depending on what other plugins you require to be functional in your Fedina URL, you can enable them from here. For the purpose of training, we focus on core modules so that you can start using Fedina initially. For these modules which are plugins, we can provide you with videos which you can have a look at and configure. So I've done these changes in the same way you'll be able to do the changes for your school. Also, you can set up email and SMS by going to company and email and SMS settings. So if you have an SMS package, you can create that package here and link that with the Fedina account. So in Fedina, there are few events in, by which you can send SMS to the students and parents and the employees, which are the teachers. There are also automatic SMSs that are sent and we can create an SMS as well. For that, this configuration must be done. Here we'll have to give the package name, the service provider, the message limit, what is the validity of the package and the character limit if it is not default, which is 160. Also, in the SMS API documentation, there will be key value pairs for your login of SMS API. You have to use the same here. So all these information can be entered by you. In case you find it difficult to understand the SMS API documentation, you can mail at support with the same and we will do the setup for you. 
In the same way, you can set up email as well. So by going to company, you will see email here and you can configure the email server that you would like to use to send emails. Like SMS, there are automatic emails that are sent and also they can be created. You can even configure payment gateway. This is for any kind of income transaction that you want to do in Fidina. For example, fees. You can configure that gateway by clicking on new gateway. You can give the name of that gateway. And based on technical data related to the gateway, these configuration fields, variable fields and response parameters can be saved. Once this is done, you can assign the same to your school. So here you will see that all the details about the school will be coming as you have done the settings. Also, the domain that we will be giving, as I said, will be relevant to the name of the school. For example, here I would be giving abc.fidina.com. In case you find that this is not the one that you want, you can change it to your appropriate URL. Also, if you want to change the subdomain, you can do that as well to your organization's domain. For that, you'll have to create a CNAME. Once you've done these settings, we are going to log in into your domain and do the data entry based on the form that you have filled. Also, once we create the school, we send you the URL of that so you can have a look at it. But please note that that is a real-time account in which we are going to do the data entry. For entering the data into your school, we take three days after you send us the initial setup form. And on the third day, we will send you the training schedule. So here, let me show you how we enter data into this account. Let us say this is abc.fedina.com, which is your real-time account, which we have just created. So here, in accounts.fedina.com, we logged in and we created a school for you, which can be a K-12 or a higher education. Now, when you click on that school, you will get to see the details about it. When you go to domain, you will see the domain that we created for you. In this case, let's say that it is abc.fedina.com. When you click on that domain, you will get your Fedina URL. That means all the administrators, the students and the parents and other users of Fedina will be able to access Fedina using this URL. So currently you can see that there is no logo here of your school and it is asking you for username and password. Now first of all, admin must log in into Fedina because admin is the one who will be creating other users and doing the basic setup. And for admin, by default, the username will be admin and admin123. Once you log in, you will see this screen which is known as the dashboard of Fedina. In case you have more than one admin in your institute, you can create more than one by going to administration and users. So actually you can see the menu button is here. When you click on this, the functionality of Fedina is divided into various modules. Academics will have academic related information like attendance, calendar, examination, profile, timetable, etc. Collaboration will have the ways you connect to Fedina. Event creation, news. So this is how you will be able to talk to Fedina users. Data and reports will have report related information which can be the courses, subjects, fees, etc. Administration will have the administrative activities like fees creation, employee management, the basic settings and the users. 
This is where you'll be able to create more than one admin. So let's go to user first and see how to create admins. Already I'm logged in as the master admin and I can have more master admins. So I'll go to add new here and give the name. For example, I can have admin1 which is the username of the another admin. I can have the first name. So this is the name of the admin. I can have a password for him. So here I am creating admin 1, 1, 2, 3. So this is another admin of Fidina now. Besides admin username. I can create more than one. Another one let's say. Again I give the name admin 2. I can give some first name. Password admin 2, 1, 2, 3 and create. So like this, you can create admins, multiple admins in Fedina. Once you're logged in, you might also want to change your password. So here you can see this avatar on the top right. Click on it, go to admin user and on the top right you will see change password option. This is where you can give your old password which is admin123 for the very first time. And you can give the new password which you can confirm. So now let's come back to the dashboard and understand what this means. This type of dashboard is coming because we have enabled data palette when we were creating the school, which is a plugin. So if you remember, when I showed you the plugins here, I enabled data palette plugin. And this plugin shows you this kind of dashboard. If you do not enable this, let's say we disable it and we save it and we open this page again, a dashboard will be in form of icons. It's an iconic dashboard. It'll have very basic modules on the screen. If you want to have this kind of dashboard, you can disable data palette plugin. So right now, I do not have data palette plugin. In case I want to have a dashboard, I can check this data palette plugin and refresh it again and I'll be getting the dashboard. In this dashboard, you will see dashlets. So this box that you see here is called a dashlet. And each dashlet is giving you some information about your institute. For example, I can see what all employees are on leave today. I can scroll to see for tomorrow or choose this calendar to see for a particular date. In the same way, I have some other modules which I can put in my dashboard to get instant information. If I do not want to see a module, I can just remove it from here. I can also rearrange them the way I want. Also, I can manage what all I want to see from here as well. Now, let's see that how the training team will be doing the general settings for you. So after we log in into the URL that we create for you, we go to settings and general settings. This is where we enter the information as provided by you. So you've given us the name of your college. So let's take this example and do the same. So here we'll enter the name of your college or school, the address, phone number and email. Now these three information that we show here, we enter by looking at your institute's website. You can change that as you want by again coming to this page and editing it. So even after we've entered the data, you'll be able to update any of these fields as how you want them. So the things that you see here, which are address, phone, email and website are entered by the training team by researching upon your institute. In case we do not find anything, we are going to leave them blank and they can be entered later on. Institute type is selected based on your form that is filled. In this case, 
it's K12. So let's say we are going to select K12 here. Attendance type is also given to us by you. So that is daily in this case, which means the attendance is taken once in a day or twice in a day for your school. Start of the week generally depends on the region in the world. So let's say it is Monday to Saturday, which is again provided to us by you. So here I will take the start date to be Monday. Then we ask you about the grading system that you follow. So based on your input about the grading system, we select that for you. So in case you say it is CBSE, we, we are going to select CCE, which is the grading system. Once we do this, we update it or we save it for you. In case you want to change any of this data, you can come back to this page again by going to Administration, Settings, General Settings, and you will be able to edit the data as you want to. You can see once it's changed here, the name appears here as well. Once we have done the basic settings, we go to manage class batch. This is where we are going to enter your class data or your courses data. So we go to manage class. And initially, there is no data that we will see. So we will be entering the data again based on the inputs that we have given. We ask you about the academic year start and end date of all the courses and batches which you, you would have replied. And also, what do you call the courses and classes? For example, some schools might call them standards, standard 1, standard 2. Some schools might call them grades grade 1 and so on. Or some others may call them classes, class 1, class 2 and so on. So that is what we are going to configure for you now. We understand about the courses from the data that you give us. Also, we can check what all courses are running in your institute at a time. So here you might have answered something like kindergarten and then class 1 to class 3. So that would mean the courses for you would be kindergarten, class 1, class 2 and class 3 in this case. And also what is the matching course structure? So in class 1 you might have sections or group of students. So that you have said that it is A, B and C. It means in class 1, you have grouped students into batches, which you call A, B and C. This name A, B and C may vary. This can change. Also, how you promote the students from one class to another. We also ask you about the subjects. So first of all, what the training team does is to enter the courses and create batches inside it as per the inputs given by you. So I'll take this example and show you creation of kindergarten, class 1, class 2 and class 3 in the URL. And then I'll show you how we are going to add subjects to the classes. So here we see that the classes are currently empty. So we click on new to create a new class. We give the class name as told by you to the kindergarten. We, now for section, we will not use this at the moment. We just give the class name to the kindergarten. We give some code for it. Generally, we use the same code. Code is how this class will be known to Fidina. We select the grading system. Now let's say for kindergarten, it is a normal system. Normal means 
it is simple averages of the subject's marks. CCE would be followed by CBSE. So right now, let me select normal for a course, which is kindergarten. Enable elective selection would mean that for this course that is running in your school, you allow the students to choose from optional subjects. If that is the case, you can check this option. But since this is a starting class, let's not check it here. Initial batch details. Now a batch in Farina is a group of students following the same timetable. So let's say in kindergarten, I have a batch which I call as A. I can have any name here, but for the sake of simplicity, let's take it A. Also, it is good practice to suffix your batch with the year. The reason is because next year you might have a batch which is again A but 2017. So for this reason, I am suffixing the name of the batch with the year. Also, as told by you, the start date of the academic year is 30th June 2016. The end date would be after year. So that is what we've set here. So I create this course or class. So you will see I have kindergarten now in the class. When I click on it, I have kindergarten hyphen A2016. So please note that the name of the batch is preceded by the code of the course. This is how the batches are differentiated. So I can understand that this batch which I created, which is A2016, belongs to kindergarten. I might also have A2016 in class 1, class 2 and class 3. So that is why we proceed the name of the batch that you've given when you created the batch with the code of that course for which the batch is created. So like this, I'm going to create another course now, which is class 1. So I give the class name as class 1. I leave the section blank. The code will be the same. I can give the batch again as A2016. So again, when I open this class, you will see I have class 1, which is the code of this course, followed by A2016. Like this, I'll be creating the other courses that are provided to us by you. So let's say that is class 2. And let's say that I allow the students to select their subjects in this class. So I enable this option here and I have A2016. And like this, I'll be having the last one, which is class 3. And I can enable elective selection here as well. I'll give A as the name of the batch. So as told by you in form, we've added kindergarten, class 1, 2 and 3. Also, you've told the structure as A, B and C in one of the classes or in all of the classes. Now before we create other batches which are B and C, we add the subjects. So let's add the subjects into the batches that we've already created. To add subjects, we go to configuration. We see here manage subjects. We select the batch we select the class, we select the batch and you will see here two options, major subjects and elective groups. Major subjects are the normal subjects which every student of this batch has to study. So these are the mandatory subjects. Elective groups are the options of subjects that you provide to the students of this batch. 
So let me add the subjects that you've given as major subjects. So let's see the subjects and add them. So in class 1, I have math as a subject. I'll give the code same as the name. Maximum weekly classes is dependent on the timetable of this class. Now for section A or for batch A of this class, you will have a timetable set. Look at that timetable and enter the maximum weekly classes here, which means how many periods of this subject will you be having in a week? Duration of the period does not matter. It can be one hour, it can be two hours or even 45 minutes. You just have to give, give the number of periods here. So let's say for math, I have one period from Monday to Saturday each day. That means I'll give the maximum weekly classes to be six. Also, this is a major subject and I want to have an exam for this in this batch. So I will not check this option. No exam is used for subjects which you want to show in the timetable but do not want to conduct exams for. So I will add this subject. In the same way, I will be adding another subject that is given me in the form which is science. So I will click on add subject, give the name, the code and the maximum weekly classes Again, depending on the timetable of this batch. So like this, I'll be adding the third subject, which is English. And the maximum weekly classes. So like this, I'll be adding for another class, which is class 2. So in the form, we ask you for minimum three batches and their subjects. So we'll be adding for the three that you give us and for the rest of them, you'll have to enter the way I'm showing you here. So I'll enter the subjects for class two. subjects that you give as normal subjects right now. So this is how we'll be entering for class 1 and 2 and also for class 3. It also shows you the number of weekly classes, which is the addition of all the weekly classes for all the subjects. That means, in this class, in this batch, there will be 16 periods from Monday through Saturday for the four subjects. You can cross verify that number from here. This is how we add the subjects to the batches that we provide us. Once we do that and once we see that your structure has other sections or other batches in the same class as well, we go back to manage class batch. This is where we created the batches and the classes. We click on the class and we click on new. New means besides A, you also have B who are studying in the same class but we have a different timetable. So I click on new and give B. Also the start and end date which may be same as A's or different. 
and check this option of import previous past subjects. Now, if I would not have added the subjects for A batch, I'll not be able to use this feature because no subjects will be copied. Since I've already added A batches subjects, I'll see the same in B now, which means I need not add the subjects of batch B, which is studying in the same class again. So you can see the subjects are added in the same way. It is better, as I said, let's give the name of this with the year. So it's look, it looks consistent. Here we have A and B 2016 as batches inside class 1. In the same way, if I want, I can have multiple other batches inside this class. Now, I'll do the same with class 2. I can have another batch here. So, I'll call it B 2016 and copy the subject so I do not have to create again. And like this, I can do for C as well. Here also note that in case you have told in the form that you call your courses as class, like class 1, 2, 3, but actually you want to change it and you want to call it to grade, you can anytime go and edit it. So we go to edit and we do not want to call it class, rather we want to call it grade. So we will edit in the core and the class. So now, you will see it becomes grade. So this kind of editing can be done by you for the data that we have entered. Because the data that we enter is based on the form that you give us. But in case you find that that is not the right one, you can edit it. So here I have changed the class to call it grade instead. You can change the grading system as well. Note that the grading system that you enable from the general settings will be coming here. Since I have only enabled CC, that is why I see CC here. In case I will have enabled all the four, I can select from all the four. I can also edit if I want the students to choose the subjects in this batch. So here you will see that when I go inside grade 1, I have grade 1 A 2016 as a batch and grade 1 B 2016 as another batch. Now next year, if I have new set of students in grade 1, I will create A 2017. Give the start date to be 30th June 2017 end date to be 30 June 2018 and just import the subjects and save it. So this is how I will be creating courses and batches and you can edit them anytime. Let's see the subjects. Now when I open grade 1 A batch you will see there are subjects that we've entered. Now B is where we copy the subjects. So you'll see the same subjects come here. But in case you say that in B there is an extra subject that these students study, you can add that subject here. Also, in case you see that the weekly classes are different for mathematics for A, from A, you can edit the same here. Let's make it 4 for batch B. So this editing you can do. When we are creating the subjects, we enter the weekly classes to be a dummy number. You have to edit it as per the timetable for that batch. So this is how we enter the subjects and the classes and the batches and we do the general settings. So we do all this process within three days of time. We send you the training data, the training schedule after the third day. 
Once you confirm the schedule with us, we are going to take up the other modules in Fidina that we see here. So we will be telling you about the setup that we have done, how we are going to admit the students using the admission form and you can also bulk upload them. Also, we will tell you about how you can save the soft copies of the students in the Fidina. So that is student records module. In the training, we will also tell you about setting up a fee structure. After that, we tell you about the human resource module, which is related to the employee management. There we leave the payslip. Then we tell you about examination setup, timetable, calendar and event creation. We also tell you about the reports that you see inside the data. So this is how we do initial setup and this is how you can edit the data that you entered as per your convenience. Once you admit the students and the employees, you are ready to go with the system. So we will see you in the trainings now to explain you more about our system.